Hello and welcome back to another entry in our unit guide for Bolt Action, a series where we cover the various units and weapon profiles and discuss how, when, and if they should be used. And in today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at the autocannon weapon profile of both the light and heavy variants, which is going to kick off our look into the high explosive weapon profiles. And much like the AT weapons in bolt action, a lot of the high explosive weapons are going to be appearing most often as either artillery pieces or mounted on vehicles. And the autocannons are no exception to this. Many factions in the game are going to have access to the light autocannon weapon profile as both an artillery piece or on vehicles, as there are a lot of interwar period weapons that use this weapon profile to represent them. And even up until the end of the war, many nations were still using things like 20mm cannons and the anti-aircraft role. And that makes the light autocannon profile very prevalent amongst major and minor factions alike. And when fielded as an artillery piece at regular veterancy, the light autocannon is going to be coming in at a very affordable 50 points. And that is going to be on par with both the light howitzer and also the light anti-tank gun, and will also have a three-man crew. After that, we're going to see that the light autocannon does have a 48-inch range, again on par with the other light artillery pieces, which is very much a respectable distance. However, you are going to be suffering a minus one to hit when you are targeting things beyond 24 inches due to the long range hit modifier. After that, we're going to see that the autocannons do have the fixed keyword, much like the other artillery pieces, meaning they will require a tow in order to be relocated, and should you want to target something outside of your 45 degree firing arc, you will have to make an advance order to pivot, which will inflict a minus one to hit modifier. And this is a commonly forgotten rule on the autocannons, as once again, there is a bit of confusion in the bolt action literature. A lot of these autocannon units will say artillery piece mounted on rotating platform, which which seems to imply that they would be able to fire in a 360 arc without suffering a hit modifier, but there is no actual literature in the bolt action book that says anything about the rotating platforms doing that. Meanwhile, the fixed rule is very clearly stated on them, but if there's any erratas addressing this subject, please point them out in the comment section down below. But after that, we are going to see that many autocannons do have the gun shield special rule, which again is going to increase their toughness by one against small arms direct fire. However, not every autocannon is going to have a gun shield, and some of them do have optional upgrades for 5 points, which in my opinion is generally worth it, as it's not difficult to plink away 3 wounds on a unit, and just having a little bit extra resilience goes a long way. However, it is worth mentioning that the natural enemy of the artillery piece is going to be the mortar, and the gun shield is not going to protect you from those high explosive rounds, so it's definitely not a must take, and if you're really strapped for points, you could consider dropping it, if able. But that is where the similarities to the other light artillery pieces ends, and the light autocannon becomes its own weapon. After that 48 inch range, we are going to see that autocannons fire two shots instead of one, representing their higher rate of fire, followed up by a penetration value of two, and the high explosive one inch profile. So let's go ahead and unpack these stats, starting with the number of shots. It is very rare in this game that you see artillery pieces or high explosive weapons that roll more than one dice per firing action. And that is going to mitigate one of the biggest problems I have with weapons like anti-tank guns. As again, bolt action is a game with hit modifiers being one of its core mechanics, which makes it very difficult to land a single shot and benefits those who are rolling a higher volume of dice. And while two may not seem like the definition of high volume, this is a high explosive weapon profile, which is really going to chew through soft targets like infantry and soft skin vehicles. So rolling an extra dice each turn is greatly going to increase your chances of hitting your targets throughout the course of a match, which makes autocannons a much more forgiving weapon in terms of dice rolls, and makes it much easier to get your 50 points investments worth out of this unit throughout the course of a match. After that, we're going to see that this weapon does have a penetration value of 2, which is going to drop off to 1 at long range, beyond 24 inches, which means the autocannon is definitely not a hard counter to armor, but can still prove to be quite the menace against transports and tankettes. The light autocannon is especially good against soft skin vehicles, as at long range, that penetration value of 1 is effectively going to double your chances of scoring a wound on a soft skin vehicle, 
And as many Math Hammer enthusiasts will tell you, going from 6 plus to 5 plus may not seem like the most appealing role, but it is one of the best upgrades you can get on a D6, as it again effectively doubles your chances. And when you are rolling that upgraded roll in higher quantities, it is going to make a large difference throughout the course of a match. And that is again going to highlight the benefits of this weapon rolling two dice each time it fires. All that being said, 24 inches is still a pretty respectable range, and it's definitely possible to get your enemy's armor within that plus 2 penetration range. And when a light autocannon is mounted on a vehicle, especially a wheeled vehicle, it can become a very real threat to light and even medium armored vehicles. So while the odds of a light autocannon armed vehicle such as a Humber taking on a Panzer IV definitely aren't in its favor, the weapon profile of the light autocannon is still enough to put some pressure onto that vehicle it's assaulting, and even if you don't score an actual kill and your vehicle ends up in flames by the end of the match, the trade-off of a light autocannon equipped vehicle distracting a heavily armored tank for the duration of a match is definitely a great trade-off in points, regardless of which one actually scores the kill in the end. However, if you are running your autocannon as an artillery piece, you're not going to have the luxury of being able to put pressure onto heavier armored vehicles this way, as your lack of mobility means they're more than likely always going to have their frontal armor towards you, and even the armor value of a light tank at 8 is going to be difficult for your 2 plus penetration to get through. But lastly, we are going to have the high explosive 1 inch profile on this weapon, and this is going to be the smallest and weakest profile of the high explosive template. However, it is still high explosive and packs a devastating punch over your standard small arms fire. And when using a light autocannon, you will come to realize that scoring even one of these two hits will likely do as much damage against your opponent's infantry as an entire 10-man squad would. And believe me when I say that players on the receiving end of a light autocannon are usually clutching their pearls and hoping that they don't see two hits. This is because the 1-inch template is still very much capable of covering 2-3 to three models, and two successful hits from an autocannon will likely mean that your opponent is going to have anywhere between 4-8 to eight models beneath those two templates receiving hits. Though, from my experience, it does most commonly end up being around 5. Meanwhile, if you are targeting enemies in buildings, the 1-inch template is going to roll D3 hits against that unit, which can be a little bit more swingy than templates thanks to the mandatory squad cohesion, but can definitely still be quite devastating. And while we're on the topic of templates, I want to bring up a commonly forgotten rule of autocannons, and that is when you do score a successful hit with both attacks, your templates must be touching each other on the edges, forming a sort of figure 8 template. They cannot be placed in different sections of the units, which people tend to do to get a more optimal amount of hits. It's a rule that pretty much only comes up with autocannons and is very commonly forgotten, but if your opponent pulls that on you and tries to dispute it, just open up to page 70 of the rulebook. But next up, we are going to have an element of the 1-inch high explosive profile that gets a little bit confusing on autocannons, and that is its penetration value of 1. Now, the rulebook states that high explosive weapons do not rely on kinetic energy to penetrate their targets, but rather the explosive payload of the shell itself, meaning they do not suffer a minus one penetration at long range. However, the light autocannon has a penetration value of two, while the high explosive one inch profile has a penetration value of one. So you might find yourself asking, what is my penetration value? And based on my interpretation of the bolt action rules and reading, this is my answer. The rules declaration that says high explosive weapon profiles do not lose penetration over long range is applicable to the 1 inch HE template, not the penetration value of the weapon itself. Meaning if you are targeting armor, which you will not be placing a template on, you will be going off the penetration value of the weapon, which will drop from 2 to 1 at long range. However, if you are placing a template on a unit or targeting a unit inside a building, you will be going off of the HE 1 inch profile, which will have a penetration value of 1, regardless of range. And I just want to iterate that there is nowhere in the bolt action rulebook where this is clearly defined. It's very much a good example of Warlord's shortcoming when it comes to writing rules, though I'm pretty sure my interpretation is correct. I believe the devil in the detail is them stating that when you are targeting a vehicle, do not place a template on it. But if you guys have a different interpretation of this ruling, or if there has been an errata that has cleared this up, please let me know in the comment section down below. But to sum up the penetration value on this weapon profile, if you're targeting vehicles, use the weapons profile, but if you're targeting infantry, use the HE 1 inch profile. 
But the final characteristic of the HE one inch profile is the amount of pins that it applies, which is gonna be a D2 roll, meaning a roll of one through three is gonna net you one pin, while a roll of four plus will net you two. It's also worth mentioning that these do not stack, so if you do score two successful hits, you are only gonna be rolling one D2 for pins, and no, your verbal vent is not gonna be rolling eight D2s. And overall, this is probably the weakest aspect of this high explosive profile. Obviously, the chance to apply an extra pin is very good, but an HE 1 inch weapon is not going to be putting units out of action the same way most howitzers would. And you're going to need to get either extremely lucky or overlap your unit's fire in order to pin things out with a light autocannon. And that is going to make this a weapon that is much more focused on removing models as casualties rather than hammering them into submission through pin markers as most other howitzers and high explosive profiles would. And that is once again going to play into the high rate of fire of this automatic cannon, as you are going to be fishing a lot more so for hits and kills than scoring pin markers as you would with most other high explosive weapons. However, while we're still on the topic of pin markers, it's worth mentioning that most auto cannons are going to have the flak keyword, though some of them will lose it when they are mounted in a vehicle turret. And while D2 pins isn't very impressive when firing against enemy units, it is very, very good against incoming aircraft, as they are defeated by scoring pin markers against them rather than actual hits, and it only takes three pin markers for an incoming plane attack to be counted as either destroyed and or deterred. So autocannons fielded in the anti-aircraft role are actually a very potent counter to forward air observers. However, if you do plan on bringing an air observer yourself, be careful if you have autocannons in your list, as they can friendly fire if they fail the hold fire check. And yes, I could do an entire video on how unnecessarily convoluted air observers and flak are, but that is going to fully cover the light autocannon weapon profile and move us along to the heavy autocannon, which is just a very slight tweak on this existing weapon. For just 10 points more, you are going to be getting a similar stat line with a plus one bonus to your penetration value, upping it to three and an increase in range from 48 inches to 72 inches. On top of that, you are going to be gaining a fourth crew member, though in most cases, you will also be losing the gun shield, though there are a few units that have it available as an upgrade. Again, something I would consider taking. So with this upgrade from light to heavy autocannon, you're actually getting a lot in just a 10 point package. The 72 inch threat range is very impressive, but honestly a bit overkill if you're just trying to target infantry. But when paired with that increased penetration value, you are going to be hitting at plus 3 at 36 inch range, making this weapon much more potent against enemy vehicles, though I still wouldn't consider it a hard countermeasure to armor. However, the ability to poke both vehicles and infantry at 72 inch range is definitely a presence that will be felt on the battlefield. And if you have the ability to choose between a light autocannon and a heavy autocannon, I think spending the 10 points to upgrade it to heavy is very much worth it. Though there is very few list building options in bolt action that will actually present you with such a choice. Also, there are many different units in bolt action that actually make use of multiple light autocannons on a single platform, and I would say that those units take the priority over the heavy autocannon. But what is the most applicable use for an autocannon when you are building your reinforced platoon? Well, I have to say, taking a light autocannon in the artillery slot is not really the best option. I would much prefer taking a howitzer there, as it's going to be able to do more damage over long range and make use of indirect fire. And the lack of mobility on the artillery piece means that you're not going to be able to take as many shots throughout the course of a match. And while a howitzer can make up for that by scoring one or two good hits, it's just a flat out dent on the usability of the autocannon. Again, it's a weapon that's going to be more focused on killing than pinning people out, which means you're going to want to be able to be more aggressive with it. And being a stationary artillery piece really holds that back. However, our heavy autocannon with its increased range and penetration value is going to be able to do a lot better in that artillery role as it can offer very potent and versatile area denial, especially against light mechanized forces that rely on transports and other soft skin vehicles in order to get their forces around the map. As I mentioned earlier, there are also going to be weapon platforms that have multiple light autocannons mounted on them, and while the sheer lethality of these weapons may be tempting, they are going to be more expensive units based on how many autocannons they have, and if they are going to be deployed as infantry manned artillery pieces, they are going to be very high priority targets for units like snipers and mortars, and I would recommend sinking the points investments of a multi-autocannon weapon into a more sturdy chassis than an artillery piece. 
A good example of this would be taking the Verbalwind instead of the Flak Veering for 100 more points, which is going to upgrade you from a stationary 4-man artillery piece up to the chassis of a medium tank. And that is going to bring me to one of my main points with auto cannons, and that is that they are best mounted on vehicles, and very specifically on light vehicles. While auto cannons are decent weapons, thanks to that multiple shot high explosive profile, there's very few situations at face value in which I would take them over a light howitzer. However, in the reinforced platoon, we do have a slot for armored cars, and most factions in the game are going to have a wheeled vehicle with 7 plus armor that has a light auto cannon mounted in a turret. And a prime example of this would be vehicles like the Humber or the 222, who offer a highly mobile 7 plus armor chassis for the light auto cannon at just 95 points. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, these units are very good at pushing objectives and putting the heat on enemy vehicles, and can very rapidly redeploy a respectable amount of ordnance to either act as a stopgap or push a vulnerable flank. Now, heavy auto cannons are unfortunately a bit more rare to see mounted on vehicles, and when they are, they're usually not the best points investment. Again, going from light to heavy auto cannon is only increasing your range and penetration value by one. It's not increasing the size of your HE template like going from a light to a heavy howitzer would. And when you look at vehicles like the Ausvind that have a heavy auto cannon mounted on them, it's just not really enough gun for that points investment. So while heavy auto cannons are definitely better in the artillery slot than a light auto cannon, they unfortunately just don't exist as much on vehicles in that perfect blend of gun to armor ratio to justify the points. Instead, if you're looking to upgrade the punchiness of your auto cannons on your vehicles, it's better to go with multiple light auto cannons than a singular heavy auto cannon. As, once again, in bolt action, the more shots the better, and if your extra points aren't going to upgrade the HE profile, you're better off instead trying to get more templates onto the field. However, as I mentioned earlier, you are going to be paying for each of those auto cannons on that vehicle, and the cost of these multi-gun AA platforms can get pretty extraordinary pretty quick. So overall, I do find the most applicable use for auto cannons to be on light, highly maneuverable vehicles, again with the 222 being my most commonly used example, as they allow the auto cannon to be used to its greatest effects, while existing in an affordable vehicle bundle that takes up a rather less competitive spot in the reinforced platoon. All that being said, vehicles with multiple automatic cannons mounted on them can be quite effective if you are willing to dedicate that highly coveted armored slot in the reinforced platoon to them. Meanwhile, heavy auto cannons can be a very affordable and versatile tool for your artillery slot in a reinforced platoon, as they can poke both infantry and light vehicles at a very impressive range. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What is your favorite use of an auto cannon, and where do you see it show up most on the battlefield? As always, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Consider subscribing to the channel to see more entries in this bolt action unit guide, and turn on notifications so you don't miss them. And as always, until next time, take care.